All right, and I think we might be live, probably. How's it going, guys? I'm Josh. Welcome to what I believe is my yeah my fourth live photo reviewing video. And for those of you who are new today, I'm going to ramble for one more minute while everyone comes and joins the chat and gets it going. But basically, to explain what I do, I'm going to be reviewing your photos from Instagram. So to submit your photos, all you have to do is super simple. You just have to actually just read in the description of this post. Um, but yeah, basically, I just want you guys to submit some photos. I'll be going through them, picking random shots that look interesting to me, and talking about what makes them good, what makes them bad, and all that good stuff. And a couple things to preface this before I actually get into the critiquing. First of all, I just ate a muffin, so I'm kind of hyped. Uh, second of all, um, we've gone the plain t-shirt route. I feel like this makes me look a little less knowledgeable than with the collar, but um, oh, we're at that point now. I, you know, when you get comfortable in a relationship and you stop trying to impress the other person, I, th I think that's where we're at with um, the live stream. So I basically, I've given up is what I'm trying to say. Um, and let's see, a couple other things. Um, that's all I can think of for now. Um, so, oh yeah, the one last thing I want to say with, as far as all of this reviewing goes, is... Photography is super subjective, and I'm probably going to say things that you don't agree with because uh, that's just how it goes. And if I'm, I feel like if I'm saying a good opinion, like a real opinion, um, some people will agree, some people won't. If everyone agreed, I wouldn't be giving real strong opinions. So um, yeah, I would love to hear if you disagree with anything I have to say because debate is always awesome. So hopefully you guys will also keep this debate going in the live stream where we can talk about, um, you know. The, the subjectivity of photography. Because I might think a photo sucks, and you're like, no, that was the best photo in the entire world. Um, or vice versa. So anyway, that is it. The one other thing I want to say before we get going is um, there is a super chat feature in this. And um, look, I know everyone wants to submit their photos, and I'm going to try to review as many as I can today. However, there isn't usually enough time because you guys just pile them on in the chat. So if you want to guarantee that your photos get reviewed, all you have to do is make a small donation just to show you're serious and to help me out because I do this for a living and uh, it's awesome. So make a donation and include your Instagram name and I guarantee you I will review your photos. However, you do not have to make a donation to get reviewed and I'll be doing a bunch of ones who just submitted theirs in the chat uh, also. So that's, that's it. Um, let's get this going now and start with with some reviews, uh, and welcome to anyone that just joined. All right, so first one I pulled up, let's flip the screen. Welcome to, and this is one of those people who came early, so as a thank you, I want to just jump right in there. Um, Murad Yassin, uh, thanks for hanging out in the chat beforehand. Oh, wow, they've done some really cool stuff with bokeh and cats, that's a dangerous combo of greatness. Um, yeah, I've seen, uh, who is it that does this? Do you guys know the photographer Brandon Wolfel? Let me see, Brandon Wolfel. He's so, so talented and he does a lot of really great work with um, with string lights. And you know what might be like a $5 investment can actually get you some really, really sick photos. Um, common, common theme in all of his stuff. Um, as you can see, it's, it's incredible. Um, he's got a real, real technique going. Anyway, back to um, back to you guys. Um, yeah, these are beautiful. Um, let's see, what are we gonna talk about? Hmm. All right, let's talk about this photo. Um, and this is in oh, Pakistan. Wow, we have a Pakistani viewer, I believe, and this is probably proof. So thoughts on this? First of all, really nice understanding of bokeh clearly and all their other work as well and I like their warm tones it's just this is a relaxing photo um, now if you look at the subject's face it's kind of being backlit by what I imagine are cars or whatever that lighting is it's hard to see because it's in bokeh um, and that's super cool um, sometimes what I like to do for this sort of image is like I, I think the subject is a little bit dark and it's like he's borderline silhouetted um, if you could have a little more light coming in the same direction even um, toward his face, um, it, would, it would give him this nice emphasis yet still being sort of dark in the shadows. Um, 
And just something to consider. So what you could do to do that is you could have an iPhone light just holding right off out of screen. You could use, you know, a lamp light like we have right here. Really anything um, to, to do that. But just a little more light just to give his face a little more emphasis, I think, would um, would would really would make this image a little bit better. But it's, it's a sweet shot, and um, I back it. So anyway, that's that. Back to the face. And... Yeah, um, Murad, thank you so much for submitting, and let's see what else is happening in the live stream. Um, hmm. Bokeh seems a bit played out. Wow, you guys are harsh with the critique. Man. All right, let's see. Who else do we have in here? Um, okay. Uh, all right, here's something interesting. Uh, also, I just want to say real quick, like, there's something fun about doing this and that like I have no idea what I'm gonna say. I haven't even looked at most of these Instagrams before I, I just jump right into it. Um, so so bear with me. Hopefully I, I say something somewhat intelligible. Um, I'm I'll be honest guys, I have a fog fetish. I love photos with fog in it. It's just so good. Um, e tip creations, thank you for submitting. Uh, this photo at first glance, it looks a little bit over, uh, I'm not gonna say overexposed. Uh, if you look at the greens and the trees, those are a little bit too bright, um, and the bridge is also a little bit too bright. Whereas the waterfall or river or whatever that is is or gorge is is properly exposed. So what I would do is I would bring down the whites for sure, um, and I would mess with the shadows and highlights quite a bit. Uh, hopefully you're using Lightroom to, to do these really cool aerial shots. It's a really sick image. Um, but yeah, uh, editing is definitely crucial, and the, the, the greens are a little bit too... It's also very, very saturated. Um, I've been kind of into them. This is very, very personal preference-oriented, guys. But lately, I've been really into um, just lowering down my, my saturation just a little bit. I, I usually... I bump the vibrance a bit, and then I bring down the saturation, and it, it keeps the colors like um, kind of poppy, but not like punch you in the face, uh, if that makes sense. So that's sort of the goal here. Um, and Harry, thank you so much for the super chat donation. I will get to your photos right now. And you said, "Go as savage as you can." Heart, I I love the challenge. I love the challenge. I think that like. Sometimes, so I've, I've taken a few photo classes in like college and high school, and when we do critiques, I'm always just like, man, I wish people would just be more mean, you know? Because like, I, I don't want just people to be like super nice and say, oh, you're this good. Like, look, I mean, I typically have an idea, and you probably do too, of what you did good, but it's hard to hear what you did bad. People aren't always so prone to critique, so hopefully I can be that friendly, friendly person that um, does you the favor and the disservice. Of, of being mean. Um, also, one other thing, guys, if you were a beginner photographer, do not be afraid to submit your images. Here's the thing, uh, anyone can anyone can improve, and don't be afraid that I'm going to tear you apart, because, you know, I can usually acknowledge someone's objective skill, and go off of that and make suggestions for them, not just say, oh, this sucks, you know, so, um, yeah, hopefully I can make appropriate criticisms for all skill levels, unless you're better than me, in which case... Um, maybe you just want to do it for promotion. Anyway, um, yeah, so Harry, thank you so much for Super Chat. Let's talk about your images. All right, he's got a very new Instagram, uh, just five photos. Let's talk about double exposures for a second. Double exposures, uh, so it looks like he did this, um, yeah, all right, he did this on a film camera, I believe, which is awesome. Uh, you could do these in Photoshop. Uh, just Google how to do double exposure. You just combine two images um, and see he had the outline of his friend or himself or whoever with the tree in the background. And it's basically a really easy way to take a super freaking artsy photo. Um, I'm, and I'm not calling it a cop out. I think all these things, anything cliche in photography is like, you have to try. You, you, you have to do the cliches at some point to figure things out. Um, so... I don't know, and, and it's like a really cool, easy way to take a nice photo. Same goes for like long exposures. People think long exposures are sick, um, and they're not that hard, but they make your stuff just look really, really good. Um, 
Okay, so let's see. This photo, see it's it's hard when someone's shooting, alright, this is digital, so I can now actually really delve in a little bit. So first of all, the shutter speed looks to be a little bit on the slower side. I wish I had it here so I could refer to it, but if you look at the subject, um, clearly he's running or she's running, and she's just like a little bit... Um, it looks to be a little bit of like, it's just not a super sharp image. Um, and I would say, yeah, slightly faster shutter speed would do you well. But also it's a style to have a, a, this, so that's fine. The other thing that's a little more of like an objective piece of advice for you, that's not just my own really picky style, is I don't like that your subject blends into the background. Um, you know, sunset shots are cool. Oftentimes what you have to do is sometimes you even have to select your subject and then bring up the shadows or highlights in um, in Photoshop or Lightroom. I, I usually do Lightroom. So like make a selection just around the subject because um, right here they just sort of like blend in and it's, it's sort of distracting and um, you know photography is all about guiding your eye to where it needs to be and when it's not a clear guide and everything blends together um, it gets a little be it gets to be a little bit harder. So anyway, Harry, I hope that was uh, savage enough for you. I'm not sure if I know what savage means, but I, I, I tried my best. Um, oh, wow. A couple other super chats. You guys are amazing. Matthew Smith, thank you so much. And one other thing, guys, um, one piece of advice that you guys have given me in the past on these is that um, we've gotten a lot of super chats and I don't have the time to get to people that didn't make um, donations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Keep doing the super chats, and every once in a while, I'll throw in one from um, non donations, and just try and keep a little more balanced. Uh, yeah, but anyway, Matthew Smith, you've made the donation. You're the man, and let's um, let's delve into your work, man. Unless you're a girl, Matthew Smith, four seventy. Okay, what do we have here? Hang on one second, just letting this load. By the way, guys, um, I really apologize for the construction that they're doing right freaking above me. Um, you know, noise to compete with. That is the life of living in a, uh, a New York apartment. Uh, Matthew Smith 420. 370. 370. Sorry, guys. Having a bit of trouble finding this Instagram. 470. All right. We are good. Okay, more bokeh, guys. We've got serious bokeh operation from Matthew. Got the shirtless pic so you know what he is about. Oh, wow. So he's one of those guys that has dedicated his Instagram to this. Um, he's very extended. It looks way better, actually, when you're on, like, a phone and there's not these big white bars. Um, now, a piece of advice for you guys. Like, this is cool, and it's I love when guys have really strong aesthetics like this uh, on the cover page. But bear in mind that your followers just see like one photo that's kind of boring. I mean, they see this, and what happens typically is it ruins engagement rates. So look at this, 33 likes, 90 likes, 43 likes. So, you know, I know this looks cool, but the Instagram algorithm now, because it's not chronological, sees this and they're like, all right, this dude's blowing it. Half of his work, or in this case, a third of his work isn't good. So like, you gotta be really careful with that. and. Um, you know, it's such a, it's such a, it's such a dedicated thing. Um, I personally wouldn't do it, but I respect, um, yeah, respect the dedication, I guess. Um, all right, let's see. I think my favorite thing I've seen so far on this Instagram is definitely these. So for anyone wondering how to do images like this, um, it's actually very, very simple. So all you have to do, uh, man, this kid does not look stoked. Um, all you have to do is take two images, set your camera up on a tripod. The first image would be you know, your friend holding up the frame. Um, the second image then would be you have your friend in the frame move away, and then you just overlay what you want to remove the body, and you have this neat image. Um, I've actually been meaning to try this. I've seen a few people do it lately. I think it's sort of like a, an Instagram trend maybe, um, but this is really neat. Um, one thing I would suggest... Um, is, and I'm going to be kind of a dick here, I'll be honest. I know I'm being a dick here, but like, this forest is like not that 
interesting, um, especially composition-wise. Like, he's not framed up between anything too well. I mean, I like that he's not in the middle of this tree, but I feel like it's not a super interesting... Oh, a lot of arm. Super interesting composition. And one thing that can nicely make up for that sometimes is just using a shallower depth of field to um, to avoid, you know, if you, ha if you don't have a great place to shoot, just focus really heavily on the subject as opposed to um, seeing some some medium good forestry. Um, or maybe just work on composition so you have a stronger elements, all that good stuff. Anyway, um, I think that was actually slightly more savage than the last one. Hey, uh, real quick for anyone who's new to this, welcome, welcome. Um, you're here to watch me talk smack about your photography. That's awesome. But no, seriously, the goal is to critique you and give you guys some helpful advice. So I am very opinionated. You may or may not disagree with me, but I think if you're disagreeing with me, that means I'm giving good opinions. So that's the goal today. Um, and feel free to submit your images in the live chat. Um, yeah. And we've got a bunch of new submissions. All right, let's pick a random one. Um, let's see. And hey, thank you guys all so much for the Super Chat submissions. I will get to yours in a second. And if I don't, by the end of this, I'm going to go until about 5 p.m., uh, you can email me with your Instagram name, and I will, you know, I'll still give you a thorough critique. It might actually be even better and more in-depth because I have you know, time to think about it. Um, Actually, usually after these, when I have a few extra super chats I didn't get to, my friends and I like to just look at these photos together because it is just sort of, it's fun looking at you guys' work. I really, really enjoy these. Um, all right, so we're going to pick a random one, someone that didn't donate because let's keep things equitable. Um, oh, man, I try to put it in and it doesn't pull up. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's hope this is good. Okay, this is corporate endorsement. I'll be honest, I picked this guy because I liked the username, corporate endorsement. I used to write weird things in my grip tape and one of them was corporate sponsorship. So this is, you know, he's relating right now. Hmm. All right, let's talk about this, guys. So really quick, here's my opinion on black and white. And I know for a fact this is not a popular opinion, um, but I very strongly believe this. I think that, here, I'm going to go to my face so you know that I'm serious. Um, and you're going to see me smile like an idiot. No, I'm serious that um, black and white photos I try to almost never, ever do. And the reason why is because there is a time and place for black and white. However, everything looks super freaking artsy in black and white. And when you're a beginner photographer, it's like kind of cutting corners. And you can take a kind of boring photo yet suddenly it seems really artistic and you're not going to get it as good. So what I recommend you guys do, and sort of what I still force myself to do, I make myself true color. And if it's boring, I have to mess with the HSL tab in Lightroom, which is um, when you actually tweak with individual colors. But basically, unless you're shooting film black and white, which is a very good excuse for shooting black and white, um, you have to. Um, if you're shooting with a DSLR, try to take advantage of color and um, get good at it because then when you actually do have a time and place for black and white, it's going to be really, really good. Not just sort of a, uh, a cop-out. Not that this is uh, necessarily a cop-out, but um, I don't know. I, I don't see anything crazy. Look, oh, back to this photo. I Composition-wise, there's nothing crazy. The subject seems to be this guy looking at the camera, which is cool. Um, rabbis are always interesting subjects um, because they look a little bit dated and... Uh, you know, versus this girl in the most streetiest of street clothes. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, it's an interesting moment, but compositionally, nothing really stands out, and this guy sort of blends in. So I would try to isolate him. See how you have all this empty space here? If you had moved a little bit over to your left, um, you could have been isolated, and that would be a slightly stronger image. So anyway, corporate endorsement. Um, thank you for... Um, being a corporate tool. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the submission. Seriously, though, guys, I, I, I love this. So let's, let's take some more submissions. All right, we have got the homie Sam Gershwin in here who submitted one of his. He just started getting into photography. And, um, yeah, Sam G. Pick. Sam's a homie. I actually skated with him a bunch in San Francisco. And he's studying in Australia right now. So let's see. Um, actually, 
I was looking through his shots earlier today. This is amazing. This is just one of those places. Sometimes if you're in the right location, it's hard to take a bad shot. And this is definitely in that category of like, holy hell, uh, sand dunes in Lancelin, wherever that is. That's amazing. Probably in, in another hemisphere. Um, super, super cool. Um, piece of advice with this photo. Um, great lighting. I love the way the light reflects in this van. I really do not like the way the van is cut off. Think about your main subject, guys, and make sure they are in the photo appropriately. Um, the only exception for having things cut off usually is portraiture. You know, sometimes it's very strategic what you cut off of a person's body in the photo, and that's just called framing. Um, but this is like when you're shooting a van and you show this much of the van, it's almost obnoxious to not show little edges. So that's my little little piece of advice. Um, but this photo is really cool, and I, yeah, he's he's shooting at good times of day clearly. Anyway, back to my face. Let's catch up with the live chat. Um, I don't know how do people keep up with this. There is so much like. I'm, I'm impressed that people live stream as regularly as they do and like engage. Um, I feel like I'm so absorbed in trying to review that I'm not always the best at keeping up with the live chat and everything. So welcome, everyone that's new. Um, hope you enjoy hearing me um, shoot the shit and talk about your images. Hmm. If I seem slightly more energetic today, it's, it's probably the muffin. It was like a hype muffin, and it was very deliberate, too. I'm like, I'm going to eat a chocolate muffin. I'm going to be pumped to talk about photos. All right, let's take someone from the Super Chat. Um, Everett, um, Everett, what's your name? Everett uh, Shirtliff, you did not include your Instagram name in the Super Chat. That would be very helpful. Um, just, um, yeah, send it in the, uh, in the live chat, and I'll try and find it, hopefully. So anyway, Marco, thank you so much for the submission. This guy... This guy claims I am not a photographer. Best one is from my iPhone, and it features a fog. Scroll down. 15 down on the right. Wow, this is a lot of work. I. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if I go down 15 to the right. I can't promise Marco anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Marco Korovic. Let's see what's good on the feed. All right, here's advice number one. If you have to scroll down 15, maybe you should post better content. I, I haven't even looked at your photos yet, but that's definitely a thing. Um, okay, let's see. Hmm. Um, first thought of this photo, this line is really nice. I love a simple photo that doesn't have too much going on, and it looks to me like... He used a long exposure and a neutral density filter, maybe, because this water is so smooth, but I can't tell for sure. Um, actually, maybe not. You have the boat over here. Um, this is sort of interesting. Um, I'm like I'm intrigued by what is this. It feels almost like cut off, um, but maybe it just wasn't that good and it shouldn't have been in the image. I feel a little bit teased by this, though. I'd be curious to know how the image would look. If you just cropped it down a little bit in, so like the line ended right here, um, yeah, I think that would be really neat. Um, another thing is think about positioning. So um, if he were to go up, if, say however high he's standing, if he were to raise the camera up two feet, then this pier would then align almost with this blue water, and you wouldn't see this little light blue crack in between. I almost wish he got a little bit lower and show just a tiny bit more of this. But that's really nitpicky. I think he was actually at a pretty good height. Um, so anyway, this is neat. And it is shot in South End, South End and Sea. Where is that? I think it's the UK, maybe? Um, I'm going to look into this later. I will indulge my curiosity and my lack of geographic knowledge in due time. Um, hey, little fun fact, guys. I just planned a trip very impulsively yesterday, and um, I'm going to Washington next week. Washington State, I'm going to go camping in all three national parks there. It's sort of my dream trip, so I am stoked, and hopefully you are too, because there will be accompanying photography and maybe a national park video or two coming up. So keep an eye out for that. 
I'm stoked. Hopefully you are too. Um, alrighty, let's see what else we've got. Andrew Yango, thank you so much for the super chat. And Jack Hopkins, you are also the man. Oh, we're getting, we're getting a good number of these. That's amazing. It is very flattering, guys, that you um, are making these donate donations because, you know, uh, the thought that people would want to hear me riff on their photography is, it's an honor. Um, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy that you guys want me to do it. Andrew Yango, I want to review your photos, but your Instagram is currently private. Don't do that. What are you doing, man? Uh, make it public, and I'm going to check back in like three minutes on your photography, and hopefully you've, uh, you've gotten it together by then. All right. Um, Stark Entertainment, thank you so much for the super chat. You're the man. Let's talk about your photos that are also hopefully the man. We'll see. And hey, anyone that's new, welcome, welcome. Um, details on how to submit your photos in the description. And that's about it. That's about it, guys. Um, let's see. Jared Stark. All right. Let's get into it, guys. So here we have classic fire spinning. I want to give you guys a little bit of advice for this. Um, I'm pretty sure it's called... Oh yeah, it's called Steel Wool Photography. So if you're curious about it, just Google it, um, Steel Wool, W-O-O-L. And a couple things, so you're basically, you're lighting steel wool on fire and spinning it around. And be careful in what material you spin it on, um, because it's totally throwing fire all over. Uh, it's best to do it like right after it rains so that everything's wet and you're not going to start a fire. Don't do it on a dry night. That's my only advice. Um, so a couple things with this image. First of all, a um, lot of foreground here and then a lot of cut off um, light trails here. I would definitely, definitely, definitely have positioned the camera up way more. Maybe even cut it off. This is sort of a cool natural line. So I would try and maybe have it right here, like the cutoff point right here. Um, so that first you see the full arc and second you have this line that immediately just sort of um, says, hey, this is the bottom of the photo. And it, it, it's basically like a framing line, which is kind of neat. Um, yeah, otherwise, mm, I wish that there was some sort of light, like an external light in the foreground to light up this grass because it does look so just bland. But that is definitely a battle for these sort of photos. Um, and it's really situational. And it's hard to, to find the place to have a great photo like this. I've only done steel wool a couple times, so who am I to say? But anyway, those are my, um, that's my two cents. That is my two cents. Okay, Jared Stark, thank you so much for submitting. Let's see if Andrew Yango is still blowing it, or has he gone public and made his foray into the world, into the world. All right, he has. Andrew, looks like you like colors. All right, let's see what you've got. Is this actually just white, or is it still loading? Wait, is this kid just a prankster that posts all white photos? Oh. All right, so we, we're dealing with a prankster. Um, <laughs> that's kind of funny, actually. Hmm. So, yeah, he clearly has an aesthetic. <laughs> and he's just waiting to post. Oh, I think he messed up. What's he going to do? This is When he posts one more white photo, it's all going to be ruined. Um, wow. Best of luck. Andrew. Um, all right, let's talk about Antelope Canyon, the most cliche photography spot in the entire world. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm being a jerk right now. I actually really, really want to go out here. Um, it is very, very heavily photographed. And I've sort of come to the conclusion that it's impossible to take a bad photo there. But I also don't know. And what, what's interesting about this image, um, I hope he took it and it isn't just like reposting. It's really... This is a strange Instagram, and it's hard to tell. Um, but regardless, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, one thing I like about this is the typical Antelope Canyon shots, and there is definitely a typical one. This one is not that. It's a little bit different. Um, and what catches my eye is this curve right here is a really nice, like, rightward frame. It just balances out. Like, you have this dark and dark. Um, and I think subconsciously that's a really good, um, yeah, just it's a balanced image. So that's kind of neat. And um, Antelope Canyon is stupidly beautiful. So 
Andrew Yango, you're a prankster, but you also have a couple cool images on here. So keep up the good work, and welcome to having a public Instagram. I hope I'm not, hope I'm not being mean right now. Uh, am I being mean right now, guys? I think it's a live chat criticism on how friendly I'm being right now. <laughs> mm. Oh, all right, Reed Holbert, you've got Olympic National Park photos. I'm going to do yours now because that's sick, and I'm going to be there very, very soon. Man, I'm stoked to go to Washington. Washington State is one of those states that I've kind of fantasized and always dreamed of going to and haven't been yet. Um, and on a quick side note, um, because um, I'm a demographic, and so are you, and we're all photographers and probably like to travel, um, there's this really great app I want to show you guys, and this isn't like a product placement or anything. This is actually me liking an app um, that I use. It's called Bin, B-E-E-N, and it was suggested to me actually by a viewer. And what you can do is you can track the states and countries that you've been to uh, and, and check this out. So this is my U.S. state map. And look at that obnoxious little gray corner over there. We're going to fill that in soon. So check this out if you want to see, uh, you know, Impress your friends and show how well traveled you are and be a millennial. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm I'm in a mean mood right now. A fun meme, hopefully. Anyway, um, Reed Holbert. Let's talk about Olympic National Park because I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Uh, it's interesting. Where are his shoes? Hmm. Oh, this is beautiful. This is my favorite one for sure so far. I I love a good like. It looks like he's standing in some sort of cave or looking or looking through a rock. Um, but so this is the subject, right? And of course, you've got just the beautiful landscape too. Um, but I like that you have this black frame. It's super dark, um, and I love when the, the blacks are super black. Um, one thing that I would do that could be kind of interesting is messing around with Photoshop, playing with the blacks. Um, if you lower them a little bit, I still see a little bit of texture here. Um, I think so, or maybe it's just my bad eyes. But um, making sure that it's fully, fully black can just make it like do a little more emphasis, um, which is super cool. Another thing, let me see. All right, yeah, I've got Lightroom open still. Um, one thing I like to do with my curves sometimes, um, playing with the tone curves. This is... Um, I met up with a food Instagrammer named Alexa. Her Instagram is eating NYC. Uh, we had a blast shooting the other day, and um, one thing I like to do with the grays is check this out, guys. Welcome to my tone curve. Um, just making this little tail end right here. Uh, oh God, it's not a good wheel. Yeah, making this little tail end. See how? All right, Lightroom is taking way too much to process right now. But notice how my blacks get like more grayed out, um, giving it almost like a filmic photo look, which can be pretty cool. Um, so that's definitely something to consider uh, when you're editing your photos. Anyway, Reed, thank you for submitting. And let's go back to the live stream and see what's happening. Do people still hate me? Do people still like me? Let's see what's good. Um, yo, Issa, what's up, man? My homie Issa's in the chat right now. Uh, he also takes very good photos. Um, Okay, let's do a super chat because we've got a bunch that I haven't gotten to yet. Um, Everett, I can't find your Instagram because um, you didn't put it in there. So just uh, ta send me an email and I'll definitely get to it later. Um, and if I don't get to any of these super chats, like I said earlier, I guarantee you that I will email you back and give you probably a more thorough critique, maybe, because um, I actually have time to think about it and don't have to come up with something on the spot. I mean, what's kind of crazy about this, guys, is... When I'm doing this, I get to see the Instagram for maybe five more seconds than you do. Then I have to come up with stuff to talk about. So sometimes I think my advice will be better than other times. Um, sometimes we'll be talking on my ass, and sometimes we'll get quality advice. It's sort of, um, it's any man's guess. Um, <laughs> anyway. Hmm. This is cool. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
All right, let's talk about this image. So, I don't know what this light thing is, um, and it's <laughs> it's huge actually. Um, but on the topic of backlit photos um, and stepping it back to the first Instagram we talked about today, the guy whose images um, I wished it was, it was a little silhouetted and I wish that he had a little more lighting on um, the guy's back of his face. Um, this is the sort of thing where like you have this very clearly bright light and look how his face has this nice white. I really like that personally. So what could be interesting to do in this photo is if you positioned him here and then shot it from another angle at which you can, couldn't see this massive white monstrosity here, then he just has this really interesting backlit, um, how did it happen sort of thing. Um, that has some cool potential. Um, yeah, it's definitely something to consider. That's a good example of backlighting though. And this image catches my eye. This is beautiful. I love a good reflection. Looks like it's some sort of train going through some, oh my God, he's in Alaska. That's actually maybe one of the very few places that is cooler than cooler than Washington State. So Richard Lee, keep up the good travels and uh, keep up the good images. Thank you so much for submitting and for the super chat. You are the man. And everyone, um, everyone that's hanging out right now, super, super sick to, to be with you guys. I'm flattered that you guys want to hear me talk about all this. And for those of you that are actually giving me super chats, that's amazing. Um, I'm, it's an honor. It's really an honor to get to... Get to review you guys' photos and to have you guys want me to. So hopefully I can uh, come through. Anyway, uh, Jack Lyons Media. Thank you so much for the super chat. You're the man. Um, your horses are the man. This guy likes horses. Uh, let's see what we've got. Oh my gosh. All right, these are sick images. You can immediately tell he's working with some lights. Oh, wow. Beautiful symmetry. Ooh. This is really a sick image. Wow. I I love the shot like a lot. The timing is absolutely perfect. The horse is just, I mean, look at him. And what's really nice is the isolation of the subject. So the horse is jumping this. And I'm sure there were times at which, um, position-wise, he'd be blocked out by this thing in the front. But see how nothing is touching? It's like really well isolated. So the focus is good, um, fast shutter speed, probably 1 800th, if not faster. And it's just such a perfectly symmetrical photo. And this like white space too is super cool. Wow, I this is it's incredible. Wow. Well, I've never seen a horse professionally lit, um, but it looks like Oh wow, this is just sunlit. That's insane. I thought that he was using some sort of um, flashes or something. But wow, these are really beautiful. Um, I would actually, now I'm curious to know how good it would look if he used flashes or any sort of external light to add a little bit of backlighting so that you could have still have the nicely like silhouetted or nicely like perfectly black like studio-esque image um, just with like a little more emphasis and um, backlighting. But uh, wow, Jack, your shots are really cool, and I love seeing people shooting their passions that aren't just like, you know, typical sunsets or whatever, which I'm definitely guilty of. Uh, I think the best way to get good at photography, guys, and I've made a whole video about this called um, How to Get Started in Photography, but basically what I recommend you do is don't shoot what you think you're supposed to be shooting. Shoot what you're into. So if you like cars, just really get into shooting cars, um, and the reason why is because your images... It shows when someone is passionate about what they're shooting, um, and, and I mean you'll hone your skills when you're combining a previous passion as you're learning photography, um, and they'll sort of mesh together, and then you'll get good and expand into other genres. Um, but it's good to start with, yeah, good to start with your passions for sure. Um, all right, and next off we have a super chat from Alt Photo. I am Ansar. I'm guessing his name is Ansar. Um, so, Ansar, thank you so much for submitting. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Give me one second. My voice is... This is why I have to cap myself at an hour, because I can only ramble for so long. And also, I have a bocce ball competition this afternoon. That's the life I'm living. I'm a Brooklynite. Anyway, Ansar, let's scope your work. 
Oh, this is a cute photo. This is. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. This is cool. Pew. Wow, Switzerland. Huh. So we've got some Swiss Alps photos. That is so cool. You guys are. So well traveled, and unless he just lives in Switzerland, in which case, slightly less cool, but still very, very cool. Um, all right, yeah, this is the image I want to talk about for sure. This is a beautiful shot. So, all right, if he shot, I mean, first of all, he has this really nice, like, V, and it's sort of, um, you see, this is a V, and this is a V, and that's like this cool balance that's like a little bit subtle. Like, I don't think. My mind didn't register immediately what was happening, but then it's like, oh, this is like a yin yang actually. Um, see how this is on this side, this is on this, um, and then the fact that this is silhouetted and super black. So he, I'm guessing he actually brought down the blacks like I was talking about that last guy's shots, um, and then he shot this at a really nice time of day in which you know you have these nice oranges, and oh man, I mean this is just a really this is a beautiful image, and I'll be honest, looking at your other stuff, this is like very, very standout. Um, but well done. I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah, that's, oh, this is really cool too. Like I said, guys, the fog fetish is real. Anyway, back to my face. And sorry, thank you so much for submitting. I really enjoyed looking at your images. Um, that's awesome. Okay, uh, let's see. Let me just catch up on the live chat really quick. Um, someone is telling me that their username is Brazzers on Instagram. Nice find. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Let's try and do I don't know seven more or so. Let's go until five p.m. I gotta get warmed up to maybe three hours of stretches before bocce ball. Um, you know, can't mess around, guys. Oh, also, I, you know what? Really quick um, photo story I have for you. Today, I um, actually, last week, to take this back for a second, if you haven't seen that, I made an unboxing video where I unboxed a bunch of new Canon gear because they are now sending me equipment to test out which is super, super awesome. So I've had all this really incredible camera gear for the last two weeks, and I'll show you what, I'm, what I was using today. So first of all, I've got a full frame camera now, just to rent. Um, I've actually had to give it back soon, which I'm not hyped about. But this is a 5D Mark IV, and then this is a tilt shift lens. So look at all of these knobs and dials. Um, you can shift the lens, like so, bam. And then you can also tilt it. So look at look at this. Kind of insane. You can do some really cool stuff. And to be very honest with you guys, I, I spent maybe two or three hours shooting with this thing today, and I'm still sort of wrapping my head around the stuff you can do with it. But you can focus in these really crazy planes, and um, there's some super cool stuff. So um, yeah, fun little toy for sure. Um, and by little, I mean ginormous, ginormous toy. I'm trying to be casual about it. Um, let's do the next Instagram. So we've got a super chat from Tenzin Namgyel. I didn't have to say the last name, but I wanted to try. Um, okay. So a lot of portraiture here. Hmm. A little bit of studio work, maybe. Yeah, I think this is superimposed. Uh, it doesn't look very real, but that's, you know, that's some cool. I like that this guy is experimenting, you know, like he's trying some cool stuff. And this looks really good, actually. So that's cool. And then you get into like very personal Instagram stuff, which is always funny to see mixed in with the, you know, photography stuff. Hmm. This is nice. I, um, 
a couple things here. So, all right, I'm gonna get nit nitpicky. Um, first of all, um, your photographer's hands or your model's hands, she looks a little bit nervous, um, and a lot of that is on the photographer to make sure that they get comfortable. Now, look, I'll be very honest. I'm not the best at posing my models, but I can. My goal is usually just to get them to relax. So even if they don't have the best pose, they at least you know look good. And she's like kind of picking her nails, which looks like whatever. Um, and two other things that I would do to improve this image, I like the shallow depth of field. I like that these lines are pointing to her. That's nice. Um, I don't like that her feet are just barely cut off. It's sort of an awkward crop. Um, and I also don't like that there are these people here. So I would sometimes you gotta wait it out and just let it, you know give it time for, to, for um, whatever your background is to empty out. But um, definitely you know wait like once you find your perfect spot, be patient because it pays off to have a really empty like. Just more focus on your primary subject, which is good. Um, anyway, let's see who else is we've got. Um, okay. <clears throat> Simon, thank you so much for the submission. Let's talk about your work. What do we have here? One sec, guys, as I pull this up. Also, I'm, I'm going to jinx it right now, I know for a fact, but my upstairs neighbors haven't been that noisy with the construction in the last hour. I'm sure you probably hear hammers, but it was so much worse an hour ago. So we're, we're, we're getting pretty lucky right now. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Simon Targas, come and join me in the journey of learning. Chasing the dream, what about you? Are you guys chasing the dream? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, hmm. Interesting. This guy definitely likes to shoot his sunsets. Hmm. This looks like what was once a panorama that got separated. Um, this is why you should use the Instagram carousel feature. Um, if you guys don't know about that, I'm, I'm guessing you guys have seen it. So this, this is a carousel, I think. Yeah. So look at this. Um, it looks better on an iPhone because you actually you swipe it and scroll. But the carousel feature lets you post panoramas um, and a little quick tutorial. You know what? I have a whole YouTube video on this. I have a tutorial on how to take panoramas on a DSLR and also cut them up and post them in carousel. So if you're interested, look up Josh Katz panorama tutorial and you'll probably find it. Um, hmm. Interesting. I, um, I'm a little bit distracted in this photo. I, I kind of feel like uh, this fence pole like kind of comes out of nowhere there's no context here like if there was more fence maybe um but it just it's sort of i just wish it wasn't in the photo maybe um and then i also feel like this is cut off i don't know i i guess i'm like confused i see this i'm like what is the umbrella here doing oh someone's fishing yeah i i, I think there could be more emphasis put on all of this so i mean what you could do one would be, I think, showing the entire umbrella would probably be helpful. And let's see, what else could you do? Hmm. It could also be kind of interesting if you were to go a little more to your left right now. And you see you have this clearing between the water and this tree. And you could actually frame him up between this and this set of trees. So the umbrella is perfectly centered between you know these two... That could be a little more emphasized on the umbrella. The only problem though is you have to be directly behind this guy and you wouldn't see the fishing pole. So it would be a diff definitely a different style of image. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd throw that out there for you guys. Let's see what else. Let's go find someone else's Instagram. Mm -hmm, mm Uh, 
right? All right, let's pull some random people from the chat now just to mix it up. Um, there are a few super chats I haven't gotten to, but um, email me. Uh, let's let's keep things fair. So let's pull out a random recent submission for the people who have been patiently submitting their work. All right, skateboard photography from Germany. I am sold. Let's see what this is all about. Oh yeah, that's also something you should know is that I am totally biased in my image selection. So if you throw in something about why your images are sick, you might sell me on your stuff. Um, yeah, keep that in mind, guys. All right, so we have got Janik Steiner, an action sports photographer from Germany, which is super cool. And let's look at some of these images. Wow, this is really good. This is really, really good. Mm. Hmm. All right, let's talk about this first image. Now, I'm, oh, this is cool. Really nice framing here. You can see how long the rail is. Colorful, nice, properly lit. This is cool. This is a great image. Okay. Um. And, all right, I'm gonna stop looking at all of these and talk about one specifically. Um. I love bowl photos like this, where you have these super dark darks and you're low to the ground, so you can see this curvature that is normally like a very large big bowl that's like compressed, so it's just this nice M shape that really guides your, your eye throughout the image. That's really, really nice. I think the only, only thing this image would, would make this image like twice as good, even though I really like it and you have all these cool shapes, they come with being in a nice skate park, is using a light somewhere back here. Um, I think he used flashes for this, um, but a light somewhere around here somewhere just so you can get him to pop from the background. And I think that's also partially to blame on the fact that he's wearing a black shirt. So he blends in. If he had a white shirt, it'd be a little bit better. But if you had that, that backlighting, um, he, would, he would stand out much better and it would be nice and emphasized. But this is a really cool image. So um, yeah. Uh, Nick, well, thanks for letting me see your stuff, man. Uh, I that was cool. That was really cool. Okay, let's do about three more people. Um, so I hope you guys are selling me with why your shit's good in the live chat. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see something different. Okay, someone's telling me they've got good street photography. We'll see about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, hold on, guys. Okay, here's this girl that's been posting on Instagram a bunch, so I only feel that it's fair to check out her stuff now. Whew. Oh, wow, this is cool. All right, um... I'm not going to say her name, I'll let you read her name, but let's let's look at this image. Wow. So, wow, first thought is, is this Photoshop, this is really, really good. Um, yeah, let's, hold on, you've got the moon right here, uh, is this Photoshop? I really, maybe. Well, all right, regardless. Oh, but they're by an airport. Mm, I'm torn. I actually can't figure it out. Um, anyway, let's let's still talk about this image. I mean, this is super cool. You have so much really nice balance here. Um, especially, I think you have this T right here with the parking blocks, and then it's also a T with the plane. And I think this is one of those compositional elements that might not be immediately obvious. I don't want to be like the photo teacher that um, finds value in stuff that wasn't meant to be there. But um, I, I think that the mind actually does subconsciously think about this stuff. Um, I don't know if the moon was actually here. That is absolutely insane. Um, if not, it's, you know, a collage, which is also cool. But yeah, this is sick. The only thing I'm, I'm sort of thinking is like, did the girl have to be pointing up? Um, 
And, and again, this gets really into more about personal preference than anything else, and just me being a little bit picky. But I kind of feel like it's a very cool thing that's happening here, and it'd be cool if she was just like casually sitting there, a little less like self-aware, and just like yeah, whatever, plane flies over my head. Versus like, look what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean subtlety is cool, but also like it's a sick image. So yeah, we'll leave it at that. And back to the face. Uh, Zanzia, thank you so much for submitting. I uh, I really appreciate it. That was was cool to look at. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do one or two more people. This person has photos in their Instagram name, and they claim their photos are really good. So we'll see. We will see. One sec, guys. Thanks for dealing with my slow internet. And let's talk about. Hmm. All right, here's one. This is actually one that I pulled up a while ago that I never got to. This is um, just some guy that posted it in the live stream, live chat. Um, and he posted this shot. This is really nice. I don't like, you guys probably know, I don't like, um, what is it called? Uh, the word's lost in me right now. Um, but whatever. Um, all right, let's talk about this image. Um, watermarks. I don't like watermarks, but whatever. Um, the sun flares. Or, or beans, the sun beans are incredible. Uh, this is really, really beautiful. Um, the only thing I don't like about this image is that they clearly bump the contrast up way, way, way high. Um, so what I would consider doing is, and I, I think you have to bump the contrast up to get this sun to be so like, you know, the crisp, crisp clouds, even though the clouds are very crisp in Italy. Um, what I would recommend doing is in Lightroom, making one of those adjustment layers in which you're brightening up only a certain part of the image um, and tweaking with it. So I would sharpen and add the contrast to the sky so you get that nice pop and these nice, um, very clearly defined light beams. And then don't up the contrast so much for this area down here because it just looks, it makes the photo look over edited. Um, and I feel like these photo, like the sharpness is a little bit too high with these buildings, um, but yeah, otherwise, pretty cool image. Um, also, be sure to keep your uh, horizon line straight. The photo looks to be a little bit left heavy. Um, that might just be me. It's hard to tell on Instagram sometimes. Anyway, um, let's maybe do one more image uh, and then wrap things up for today. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's see. One more image, what should I select? So many to choose from. I feel like I'm teasing you guys right now. Um, oh, I saw something about Washington. I'm very Washington-centric right now. Um, okay, here we go. I think this is the person that I want. Someone claims to do aviation photography in a small town in Wilmington, Illinois. I haven't even looked at your photos yet, so this is just going to jump into it and hopefully they're good or bad, but interesting to talk about. Either way. All right. Um, why not? Let's talk about these images. So, we have got plane enthusiasts. This is interesting. Hmm. I think the reason why I'm intrigued by this is it's just so different. You know, I have so many viewers, including myself, that, you know, love to go on crazy vacations and take their, their travel photography national park shots. But it's cool to see someone just trying something totally different. Um, I feel like the challenge in aviation photography is like, well... How do you how do you decide? Like, can you can you get on the airfield always? And like, what kind of lenses do you use? Um, 
I also feel like lighting is really key, and all these photos look to be taken like middle of the day. Um, I mean, this is nice. Yeah, I would, I would mess with like golden hour stuff for sure. I feel like that would make all these images a little more powerful. Um, cause like, I mean, this is like, this is a cool photo seeing a plane get ready for takeoff, but it's also like this lighting is, it's just a really gross sky. And, um, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be the guy that's like a lighting snob and says, oh, you gotta shoot a golden hour, sunsets, beautiful sunny days. Like, I don't know, but I think that there is a certain, certain things you should and shouldn't be shooting at certain times of day and with certain weather. So, when you have a gray sky that's really boring and flat, um, taking a photo that's more than 50% sky is, it's a lot of sky. It's, it, I mean, I'd, I'd say it's maybe too much sky um, and there are other things to focus on. So on a day like that, it's like, okay, well, we have clouds, so the light is really even. Um, maybe it's a good portrait day. Um, when we take the portrait, it's not against the sky, but against other backdrops. Um, yeah, so really you gotta play with lighting and, and you know, don't be a lighting snob, but also know how to work with it and know that like there are there's a certain time for any shoot. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, I think we've done enough. Actually, just hit 501, and my voice is just starting to go for good. So a couple things, guys, just to close this off. If you made a super chat donation, I am infinitely grateful. Um, and if I didn't get to you, shoot me an email with your Instagram if you made the super chat. Um, and I'll remember, I'll remember you guys, um, and I'll get back to you soon with a review. And thank you, everyone, 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 for coming out and listening to me ramble for the last hour. I had a blast, and hopefully you guys did too. Um, be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, because um, yeah, it really helps me out. And any critiques, just let me know in the comments, or even you know, better yet, actually, I recommend go to my Instagram. And shoot me a DM, because I'll definitely see that, um, on how I can make these better, what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, you know, I feel like making these is a constant improving process, and that's all. So, guys, thank you so much for watching and commenting, and uh, I'm going to try and do these every week, except for next week, because I'll be camping all week with no internet. So, thank you so much for watching. I will see you eventually. Stop streaming. Go play bocce ball.